solve some scenarios. We also have some solutions. We can use a VSU. Okay. For example, this is a topology. If we use a link aggregation or some other technologies, and then to combine the switch together, logically, for the customer, maybe the topology is like this one. So if two switch directly communicate with each other to become one unit, there is a no loop. And uh, between different devices, if we use a link aggregation, or the logically for the customer, for the traffic, there is one link. So there is no loop, and uh, we can use all the link together. So later, let's say the detail of the VSU. Okay. About the VSU, let's say, of course, you have to know not every switch supports the VSU. You have to focus on the detail, which switch can support the function of the VSU. And about the basic concept of the VSU, we have two working modes. The first one is standalone mode. By default, all the switch is in the standalone mode. That means all the switch will work automatically by itself. And another mode is a VSU mode. After we add the configuration of the VSU, we have to make the mode to become VSU. Finally, we will select one main choices to become master and all the other to become standby. Okay. And uh, another one about the VSU, we have some parameters like the switch ID. In the same VSU, we have the same domain ID. Of course, one switch only have one domain ID. For example, now all the domain ID is 100. The switch ID is one, a switch ID should be different in the same domain. And the priority 100 and the trustees to become main or standby and about the control plan and the date plan. About one switch, we have a control plan to do some calculation like the routing, routing table. MAC address table, ARP table, all the table will be calculated from the control plan. About the data plan, we will follow the traffic according to the table. So forwarding part belong to the data plan. So about this part, we will give the different priority or different value information to select who is the main part, who is a master, and who is a standby. And then about the switch ID, we say the switch ID should be different in the same domain ID. In the same domain, different switch, we have two different uh, switch ID. Pay attention, maybe when you get one switch, the generally the interface value to become two slash three, right? But if in the VSU, we will add one number like one, two, three. The first one is a switch ID. The second one maybe is a slot ID. And the third one is an interface ID. So this is the first part is the switch ID. All the switch ID should be unique in the VSU. And the second one is a domain ID. And domain ID is the identify of the VSU and the distinguish different VSU. So if some VSU in the same unit, the domain ID should be same. Different unit, we have different domain ID. And within the domain ID, switch ID should be different, okay? So this is a domain ID. And another one is a priority. And the priority is used to select the finally who is a master or maybe who is a standby. And the range is from 1 to 250. The default one is 100. Higher is better. And when you use a command show switch virtual, and you can see there are two priorities. The first priority means the current priority. And the second priority means the configuration. Because after we change the Priority, we have to reload the configuration configuration again. So finally, these two values will be saved. But before we reload, the value will be different. Maybe will be different. 
So this is a priority. And the state of the next part, OK means the operation normally, and we select the rule normally. The recover means if your state is recovered, that means your system is split. We cannot detect the master, and maybe one standby will become recovered. And another is a leave, leave beyond to the process state. Finally, for example, only exist during the restarting process of the device. This is a leaving. And isolate. Isolate means when the switch idles are the same, the VSU will be the lower priority in the isolated state. Okay, in this data, all the link will be done. So this is a state. And about the rule, we have three types, the active, standby, and the con candidate. In one VSU, only one active and only one standby. We can have multiple candidates. If the active is broken, the standby will become new active. And in the candidate, we will select once the, the new standby. OK, so this is a basic rule. And the between different switch, we have to use a VSL, the virtual switching link to connect with each other. And the suggestion, at least two link to use the, for the VSL. It's better for the high availability because we use this link to detect the master, the standby or the backup, or uh, sorry, or the master is working or not. If not, we have to select a new master again. So at least two link in our network. This is a suggestion. And about the control plan, logically, each member of VSU only have one entry, and this one entry will be calculated by the active device, by the master. And when we active get the entries, finally, I will get all the members in the VSU. And then all the devices will follow the traffic according to the label. So this is a control plan. And about the forwarding plan, because after the control plan, the master told everyone the path how to follow the traffic. So we have different type of the forwarding. The first type is local forwarding. Local forwarding means when I receive the packet and I will search the entry. Finally, I will send the out interface is located on my devices. So I will directly forward the packet out. So this is a local forwarding. And the unicast forwarding, the interface and out interface on different member devices. For example, I receive packets from the, the other switch. When I search the entries, I find the best out interface should be in the device two. So I will forward the traffic of the device two and finally to forward the traffic out. So this is, this is a unicast forwarding. And the multicast forwarding, like the normal switch, I receive the multicast packets. I will do the blood. I will do the blood for to all the switch, and then the switch will directly forward the packets out. So we have typical of the forwarding. And the configuration. Let's focus on the configuration. First one, we have to detect how the VSU is connected or not, and we have two parts. We can use a VSL connection, or maybe we can use a BFD to do the detect. And then we have to explicit the VSU number version. Version should be same about the software version and the hardware version. Then we can configure the VSU and modify the device mode to become the VSI, VSU mode. The first one about the configuration of course you have to check the version and the check the connection is ready or not then we can add the configuration the configuration first one we have to add the domain id domain id is one the default value is 100 and in the same vsu the domain id should be same and the second one we have to add the switch number the switch number is a device number Default is the value one. 
and uh, another switch, the switch ID should be different, maybe two, maybe three. Then we can give the priority 200 or 150. The default value is 100, okay? We will compare the priority to select who is active, who is a standby. Then the very important one, we have to configure the VSL port. For example, enter the VSL port and add the port number. Of course, this port number have to connect with each other. So this is a configuration. After that, we have to save the configuration and then change the mode to become virtual. And to select yes, and we don't want to recover the configuration again. The same configuration of the other switch. So the switch will reload again and then to become the VSU mode. And finally, we can check use the command show switch virtual and what's the switch ID, domain ID, priority, what's the state, and what's the rule is active or standby, something like this. And now, by default, if you use a console interface to connect with the switch, by default, your enter is the active switch. So if you want to check some information of the standby, you can use this command session device two, or maybe you have the third switch, you can directly add to the device and the switch ID. Okay. What's the difference between the VSU and the switch and the switch stacking? This is a good question. VSU and the switch stacking, I think. I think VSU is a radius switch stacking in the network. It is a special switch stacking in radio. Do you see the switch stacking in radio configuration? Yes, not yet. You only see VSU, right? Different different vendor maybe have different name. Yes. So maybe someone says a VSU is uh, provides a higher performance or not. Or maybe uh, if we use a VSU, actually only one control plan, right? If this control plan is not working, we have to select a new one. But before the control plan select automatically some working were lost. So on the data center, maybe we will use uh, VSU and uh, another technology like the cross the switch and then we can use the link aggregation. Yes. And besides this one, we also can see the switching virtual link is ready or not. What's the uh, VSL AP? The AP, pay attention, this is a aggregation point. This is not the access point. This is not the wireless part, okay? Aggregation link point. And the state is up. And what's the pair site? Receive and the translate. And the what's the up time? And also we can direct it to show the VSU topology, which interface to connect with in which interface. And who is active, what's the MAC address, and who is a standby, what's the MAC address. So this is a function of the VSU. Okay, so about this part, we talk about the uh, uh, redundancy solution, right? We say something about the STP, ISTP, and MSTP. And also we talk something about the VSU, because if we use a VSU in the logic, in the management, Someone says, yeah, only one device is. So within this VSU, there is no loop. We can use all the link. And uh, between the VSU and uh, the other switch, we can use the link aggregation to communicate with each other. And then all the link can work. So this is the advantage of the VSU. So this is the first part of the technology this is the main part of the today. And later, maybe we can faster to see the service overview. OK. 
Okay, let's see the service and support overview. We have three parts. Technical support resource, training and certification and the warranty policy. About the first one, if you join the region or re use region devices, what the resources you can have. And the second one is the training and the certification. This is my part. And the third, third one is the voluntary policy. The first one of the technical support resources, we have some service portal. This is the official website of Radia. And here you can find the Radia technical document, some firewall training video, and the service policy here. So this is the website. Maybe you have any problem first time, you can direct it to add this command to use this URL and to search, to search some resources. And the second one, we also have the case portal. Maybe you want to get some technical support and maybe you have some hard failure cases and maybe you want to know some want to repair of all the radio products. All the information you can use a case portal and to add the information to ask for help. And the third one is a RITA, Radio Intelligent Technical Assistant. So about the RITA, you can directly download on your phone or maybe you can use a website. You can use this one to ask some FAQ to get some answer when you have some fault want to do the troubleshooting. And also you can see some hot topic of the region, maybe it's some technology, maybe some solution. And another one, we also provide some live chat support. Based on the live support, we can get support from anywhere. And the working hours from 9 to 12, 30 o'clock, seven days. And this is the address. Besides the live chat, we also have some country to provide the global service hotline, different country, different time, and we can provide different service. About this part, later I will show you about the material. You also can connect and use this phone number if you need. And another one is a community. You can share your idea with all the people. Here you also can find so many good document and uh, good ideas maybe of course if you have some cases and how to do the troubleshooting you also can share with us together and uh, another one we also have some facebook page because i think someone gets uh, public training information from the facebook on the facebook we will advertise some typical uh typical picture of the solution maybe of the training information. So of course, if you have the account, please follow us. And another one is authorized the service partner. Okay, we can provide the global technical support with native language. For example, some Indian, uh, English, Turkish, or something like this. So you also can focus on which part you can have and, and then you can direct it to connect with him. So about the service level agreement, the first one, if you have some problem, you can direct it to ask the Rita, the robot. It can work all the time. Then you can ask the global service hotline. Then we can ask some local ASP service. Oh, of course, if you cannot solve this problem, you can directly ask the live chat or case portal to get the online support. And of course, we some country we have on-site support. We can direct it to help the customer to diagnose and shop, troubleshooting the products and solution. And another one is the training and the certification. So today is a global public training, right? Every call, every quarter, we will have different topic and for the public training for customer. So this topic we will uh, directly add into the Facebook or maybe from your post sale to ask you this question or maybe this problem, this training you can join us. Besides this one, we also have some certification training. About the certification, we have two parts. 
One is for the products. We have enterprise, ready enterprise products. We have re products. We also have the ISE cloud products. So we have products of these three parts and we also have the training. After you join the training, you can direct it to join the exam to get the certification. And another one, we also have the certificate certification for lecturing. For example, if you also want to be a trainer like me to have training for the customer, we also hope you can direct it to join the certification and get the certification. Besides this one, we have another technology for the RCNA. About RCNA, in the invite list, I also show you how to get join the RCNA, how to get the certification, right? And besides this one, in the YouTube, we also update the RCNA training video. You also can see the information. And each video, we have one answer. And another one, we also have some cool book, FAQ, and something like this. And here is a detail. So if you are register of the e-learning system successfully, you can see some roadmap like the RCNA. And the last part is warranty policy. About the product's warranty and the support summary, we have different devices, different duration, and what's the hardware support and software support and the remote support something like this and another one is for the service product what's the sla and what's the service contact if you want to know the detail maybe later you can see the material <laughs>